good morning students so today we will uh, discuss about the dijkstra's single source so shortest path algorithm so this is another uh, greedy algorithm greedy graph algorithm uh, that we will look into and if you recall uh, i had already told you that this algorithm is very similar to the prims algorithm in spirit okay so dijkstra's algorithm so this is a single source shortest path algorithm so just like the prim semst likewise prims mst okay here again we have the set y which is initialized by a single vertex okay so here we would initialize with the vertex from which we need to calculate the shortest path and for uh, the sake of the running example let us assume that we consider this vertex to be v1 so v1 is the initialization vertex okay you place v1 in y and uh, this is the vertex from which you want to compute the shortest path to all the other vertices okay once again we have the set of edges f okay now what we do is just like the prims algorithm we choose so the initially this is empty okay and we choose the vertex say v okay that is nearest to v1 and then we add this add v to y and the edge so note that this is a directed edge directed edge from v1 to v okay so now now we have to iteratively use a similar idea as we had used in uh, the prims algorithm okay in order to compute the shortest path now this edge that we have added this v1 v this edge is definitely the shortest path right from v1 to v this is guaranteed to be the shortest 
path from v1 to v right now we have to iteratively you know update y as well as update f just in the way that we had updated these two things in the prims algorithm so for this what we do is we check the paths from v1 to the vertices in v minus y okay that allow only vertices from y as intermediate vertices so you see the same intermediate thing is also appearing here last time we got this term in uh, the description of the floyds algorithm right here again what we are insisting is that we check the paths from v1 to all the vertices in v minus y that allow only the vertices from y as intermediate vertices okay so you find out the paths from v1 to every vertex in v minus y but then these paths should only have vertices from y as intermediate vertices okay no other vertices are allowed a shortest of all these paths is the shortest path okay a shortest among all these path is the shortest path that we are desiring now once we have this the vertex at the end of this path that was till now in v minus y is added to y okay and the edge that touches this vertex is added to okay so you have two things here so the vertex at the end of such a path is added to y okay this was so all the intermediate vertices were from y this last vertex uh, we had to choose from v minus y okay and uh, the shortest among all these paths is the shortest path whose end vertex from v minus y is now placed in y and the edge that touches this vertex okay with the shortest with the current shortest path is added to f so we continue this till v and y are same okay so again we can write a top level mm -hmm. greedy algorithm as follows so we start with v1 we leave f as 
null in the beginning and then while the instance is not solved select a vertex v from v minus y that has a shortest path from v minus 1 using only the vertices in y as the intermediates add the new vertex to y add the edge on the shortest Path that touches this vertex to takes to And then if y is equal to v, the instance is solved. So here again, as you can very well appreciate, this particular statement does both selection procedure and feasibility check. And this particular statement does the solution check. So a dry run like we had done for both the prints and the Kruskal's algorithm. We will do a dry run here also on a small toy graph. Let's say the graph looks like this. So let's say this is our example graph, okay? And we have to compute the shortest paths. from v1 okay so the first thing is to find the nearest vertex
so as you can well understand that the nearest vertex to v1 is v5 so that gets into y okay now next So now we will try to find out again the vertex, okay, which is on the shortest path of V1 and containing only V5 and V1 as intermediate vertices, okay. So as we had said that the intermediate vertices so should only contain the vertices that are already placed in y okay so in this case the only vertex that we have placed in y other than v1 is v5 okay and including v5 the nearest vertex to v1 okay on its shortest path is v4 okay there is no other vertex which is intermediate which is having intermediate as v5 which is part of y okay and uh, also on the shortest path so also on the path of uh, v1 this is the only node that is on the path of v1 okay with the shortest intermediate uh, with the intermediate vertex v5 there is one more okay there is one more path which is v1 to v4 directly okay because as you know that y now at this point has v1 and v v5 right so it can be either through v1 the shortest path can be either through v1 or v5 or through both of them taken together okay so there is one which is like taking v5 this is one path to v4 and the other one is directly to v4 okay from v1 but out of this the v1 v5 v4 is shorter than the v1 v4 directly okay so that's why as we say that among the among all the paths the shortest one is the one that gets in okay the shortest one that contains any one or more of the vertices from y and is also the shortest one is included okay so that means now we have after this step we have the new set of intermediate vertices as v1 v4 and v5 okay now let us again try to see the next stage
So now what? Now we have three intermediate vertices, okay? V1, V4, and V5. Now again, we will have to enumerate the paths. So already V5 has been included, sorry, V5 has been included. V4 has been included. Okay, so now who next? So what is the shortest path from V1, okay, to any of the vertices in V minus Y via V1, V5, V4, okay? So the only thing that we can find out is the direct connection from V1 to V3, okay? So there is no path that takes you via V5, V4 to V3, okay? So the only path that we can think of is that, that actually ha is present in the graph is directly V1 to V3, and this is also the shortest path. So therefore, now in this stage, V3 gets, gets included, okay? And now your new Y has note that in this process of constructing Y, you are also building F. So this is one edge in F, this is another edge in F, and this is another edge in F. Okay. Now you have the new intermediate set. So now the only vertex left in V minus Y is V2. Everything has, else has been included in Y, right? And so therefore, again, we are in the hunt of finding out the shortest path from V1 to V2 via the intermediate vertices V4, V5, and V3. Okay, and that comes out to be the path from V3 to V2, right? So V1, V3, V2, this is the shortest one. And thus V2 is included and you have the final set of edges that are included in your shortest path, which I am marking here by the green color. Once again, you have ensured that this shortest path that you get is cycle free by using that y v minus y condition and by this intermediacy condition, you have ensured that you have constructed the path, shortest path from V1 to every other node, okay, using a very simple variant of the Prim's algorithm. Now, 
this is easy to do okay by uh, observation when you have a small gra toy graph it, this this kind of execution of the diagonal algorithm is very easy by just by looking at the toy graph you can do it but how to do we do it okay using computers once again we will try to write a c style pseudo code for this okay so instead of distance and nearest okay in the prince algorithm if you recall we used two data structures nearest and distance here we will use two parallel data structures for the diagonal algorithm touch and length okay so let us define each of them so touch i is equal to index of vertex v in y such that the edge v v i is the last edge on the current shortest path from v1 to v i using only the vertices in y as intermediates okay and the length i is the length of the current shortest path from v1 to vi using only vertices in y as intermediates okay so now given these two data structures we will write the the extra algorithm so the problem determine the shortest path from v1 to all other vertices okay inputs in greater than equal to 2 connected weighted directed graph okay where wij is the adjacency matrix of the directed graph okay and i and j range between one and n actually to n n otherwise there is no question of finding shortest paths 
output f which will have the set of edges in the shortest path so now we will just sim make some very simple modifications to the code that we had written to implement the prims algorithm and that will give us the dijkstra algorithm Again, the same index variables. if initialized to null So as we had done earlier, so we initialize okay, V1 as the last vertex on this current shortest path. Fine and the length of the path to be the weight of the edge from that node to v1 okay. the opposite from v1 to that node okay. so now repeat in minus one times So again, you are setting up V near as the nearest vertex and you are setting up the, you are finding out the minimum length edge, okay, from Y and you are setting the value of V near to that minimum length or the nearest vertex okay so once you have done this you set your age vertex indexed by touch of linear to vertex 
indexed by vignette. This is your edge, okay? And add this edge to F. Now, finally, you have to update Y. Again, you are setting this length of vignette to minus one so that you do not consider this edge anymore. Okay. And therefore, there is no cycle. So, this is the part where you update y. So this is exactly similar to what we had done in the case of prim algorithm. Just the two data structures have been replaced. You are seeing that the length of the veneer plus the W of veneer and I, that is the uh, weight of the uh, edge from veneer to I, if this plus the current length is length plus the length of veneer, uh, if that is less than the length of i, okay, so that means you have found a shorter path, okay, and therefore you update length of i to this new uh, value and then you set touch i to v near, and then finally you update the length of v near to minus one, okay, that means this edge has been visited and therefore we do not need to sorry this node has been visited and therefore we do not need to consider it anymore so that the formation of cycle is disallowed okay and just like the prince algorithm here again you have the time complexity tns this order N square. Okay, so this is very very similar in spirit to the Prim's algorithm, and as you see, the code is also extremely similar. So just a uh, homework. Okay, try to execute Dijkstra. algorithm for graphs having negative edge weights okay try to see this you will find that the diextra algorithm fails and uh, a, an interesting task for you uh, would be to identify a mechanism to convert the diextra algorithm in such a way 
or to reformulate the diastole carbon in such a way that it is also able to handle negative age weights.